In today's video, I'm gonna give you guys five tips on how to make the best video you can for a car brand. I'm gonna be creating a 45 to 60 second video for Shell Canada, and I'm gonna bring you guys along on the whole process. From getting the pitch for Shell Canada to all the way through content creation, I'm gonna tell you guys how we went through this in hopes that you guys can pick out a few tips for yourself when you're creating car content. First thing that I recommend is actually you collaborate with other creators. The first thing that I did is I called up Aaron who's currently holding the camera because I knew that I wanted to absolutely crush this project. And that means that putting more than one brain together actually is gonna make your project better. <laughs> this is gonna be the dirtiest movie I've ever made. <laughs> and I'm bringing white shoes. Are you gonna be in the water? My feet are falling asleep. Aaron, we gotta make this happen quick, bro. If you look at any of the online creators right now, like the Peter McKinnons, the Chris Howes, anyone that's creating great content, they are typically doing it with other people. North Borders, he's got a whole crew of guys that they create with. It's gonna make your project better. You're gonna have better creative ideas. Aaron's shooting out ideas, I'm shooting out ideas. And specifically with automotive, you always need someone to drive anyway. So collaborate, it'll make your videos that much better. The second stage of creating content like this is you need to do a ton of planning and research. A PR firm reached out to me, hired by Shell Canada, and they said, pitch us on an idea about the car wash. So I pitched them on the idea, and then once it got approved, that's when I had to start planning the whole entire process. 12 hours of actual work went in before I even got the job. Once my pitch and idea got approved by Shell Canada through the PR firm, then that's when you start planning and doing your research. So I had to plan what shots I wanted to do at which locations during what time of day, which car I was gonna get, how long I needed to rent that car for, what's that gonna cost and how's that gonna eat into the budget. I also need to account for when Aaron is available to shoot. So this is the part of project that takes time behind your desk making sure that everything's gonna go okay. When Shell approached me to do this project, their thought was they wanted to do something with ASMR, so a very audio focused video. Now what I wanted to do was take every aspect and component of a car wash and pair that with something that you could hear or experience out in the real world. So to start, when you enter a car wash, you have the thing that cleans the wheels. So I figured what better way to do it than to drive through a river when you actually get your wheels dirty. Then they put the soap on the windshield and then I figured, hey, if you're driving through a river, you're gonna get all this water up on the windshield. So I'm trying to compare and contrast these moments in a car wash to things that would actually happen in real life. And that brings us all the way out here to this windmill where we got two shots. It took us two hours to drive out here. It's gonna take us two hours to drive home for two shots for 10 seconds, maybe, of a video. Our goal was to get to these windmills and find a road that we could get this shot for the ending scene to match with the dryers when you're coming out of the car wash. It's just kind of a good way to showcase like a fan and air, and, but in, out in nature. So it's kind of fun, but I hope that you guys are finding this helpful. We're gonna talk about gear in just a second because all the decisions that you make about the film you're gonna make, you have to decide what gear is gonna be the best tool for that. And that doesn't always mean the most expensive stuff. So make sure to be intentional with your decisions on the front end of how you wanna film it so you can tell your DP or yourself. And that helps with your gear choices, which brings me to point number four. It's so essential to make those creative decisions before you get into which gear you're gonna use. Now, let's be honest, a lot of us are truly limited by what we have in our kit. And I'm a firm believer that you usually can make the content that you need to make with the gear that you have, whether that's your iPhone, a GoPro, whatever it is, you need to be making content to the best of your ability with the gear that you have. I don't think you always need to be upgrading and I'm not gonna try and sell you guys anything here. I'm just gonna tell you the gear that I use and the reasons behind 
recommend it. So hopefully you guys can get more educated on what you might need as an automotive content creator as well. I wanted to put my best foot forward because I'm working with a bigger brand. So I made sure to bring my DSLR. I'm currently using the Lumix S5 II and the S5 II X for my content creation. I've got a 16 to 28 mil lens, a 35 millimeter lens and an 85 millimeter lens. Now the creative decisions that we made is that we wanted some smooth footage, but a lot of it we wanted to be handheld. So the Lumix has incredible image stabilization, but for the times that I want more image stabilization, that's where the DJI Ronin 3 RS3 Mini comes in. This thing's pretty great. And because I have the smaller sized cameras in the Lumix, the mini one does a great job for me there. The next piece of gear I knew I needed was the GoPro because I wanted to mount the camera outside of the car in watery and wet conditions. The GoPro is filthy, mission accomplished. But I also needed a car mount. So I have a couple that I recommend. This is the most cost effective while actually being enough camera mount that you need for most situations. This is the Delkin Fat Gecko. I'll link it down in the description below for Amazon. And because we're shooting an ASMR video, a microphone is essential. Now again, I'm not using the best gear in the world, but I am working for a very big brand. This is just the Rode Mini mic something. It's not their most expensive one. It's cost effective, but I knew I would be able to get all the audio that I needed and be able to edit it properly using just this microphone. The last thing I want to show you is the filters that I use because as automotive content creators, whether you're doing video or photography with automotive, you typically will need an ND filter to cut down the light so you can get your proper shutter speed. But also in automotive, it's great to have a CPL filter to cut reflections off the car. Cars are just massive mirrors, so CPL is essential in your content creation. I think you can get anything from Amazon, the cheapest thing you can get if you're just starting out, and it will work. The filters that I currently use are the Freewell filters. They're magnetic and they're amazing. The latest one that I have been using is actually an ND and a CPL all built into one, which is actually everything that an automotive content creator needs. So this has a built-in three to seven stops as well as a CPL filter. So there it magnetizes on from here. You can spin this filter to see the CPL work. You can see it working on the screen back there. Once you have your CPL set what you want it, you lock that little knob on and then you can change your exposure as you need. But this all leads to the last and maybe the most important thing, one of the biggest mistakes that I made on this project with Shell, and that is get your priorities straight when you are working with larger brands. For me, I made a few mistakes here in that I love a Bronco. I think it's such a fun car. I was taking tons of photos with my new X100V, but in the final product, when I sent it to them, they said that in some ways the commercial looked a bit more like a Bronco commercial than a Shell commercial. So in your researching, make sure that you're looking at the content that they're creating. Make sure that the videos that you create are so on brand for them and think less about yourself and the content that you need and what looks good to you and make sure that the content that you're making is good for them. And I'm just speaking about this out of my own mistakes that I've made in this project. They are now very happy with the video that I've sent them. I got tons of footage on the day of, so I was able to tweak some of those things to make sure that the video is very on brand for Shell. So I'll be posting this video to my Instagram as well as some stories. And if you guys want, you can come follow me on Instagram, that'd be great. If you guys enjoy this kind of content, I love teaching you everything that I know about content creation. You guys can subscribe to the channel here and maybe you'd be interested in watching that video as well. But I do appreciate your time and I hope that I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.